How's it going everyone and good evening. Today is Wednesday, uh, April the 3rd. Yep. And uh, I'm trying, trying to fix the lighting here because the sun is going down soon. And so, yeah. So yeah, it's been a good day today. You know, work was great and stuff. Uh, it, it's that time of season again to cut grass and edging and all these things. So, um... So uh, today we're, we're going to get into Systematic Theology Lecture 10, which we're going to be covering uh, the doctrine of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Uh, mo most importantly, the deity of Christ. And so uh, before we start, let, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, help us, Lord, to understand the Son of God, Lord. Help us, Lord, to understand your ways. Help us, Lord, to understand all things through scripture lord lord we thank you lord for this opportunity to learn and to study your word together as as we um as we come to you with humble hearts to learn about you lord and to have a have a relationship with you lord i thank you lord for all that you have done in jesus name we, in jesus name we pray amen and amen all right so let's get into the, the lecture the person of Christ. What 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 is the person of Christ? Uh, the definition of it is Jesus Christ was fully God and fully man, and one person, and will be so forever. Now let's talk about the the virgin birth. This is the most fundamental uh, doctrine that the Christians believe. Is that it shows that salvation ultimately must come from the Lord. The virgin birth made possible the the unity of fully sorry of full deity and full humanity in one person. And and thirdly that the virgin birth also makes possible Christ's true humanity without Inherit sin. Okay. Uh, number two. Uh, human weaknesses and limitations. Jesus had a human mind. And we see this in Luke chapter 2 verse 52. Uh, Jesus had a human soul and human emotions. And we see this in John chapter 12 verse 27. Number three, sinlessness. Uh, we take a look at Luke chapter 2 verse 40, which I'm going to be reading right now. So turn with me in Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2 verse 40. It says, And the child grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Okay, so he grew up, okay, as a child. He grew in wisdom. He was strong in spirit, and God's grace was upon Jesus Christ. Uh, let's take a work at the deity of Christ. Now, if you're a Christian, if you don't believe in the deity of Christ, you are a heretic. I hate to say this, but every Christian who are born again, filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, must understand that you have got to defend the deity of Christ no matter what. Um... So, for being say, uh, so for being said, a the word God used of Christ. Okay, uh, we see this in John one and fourteen. The word became flesh. Jesus Christ was, or I should say, Jesus Christ is the word of God, uh, according to Revelation chapter, I believe twenty or twenty one, somewhere like that. <laughs> 
So Christ is fully divine. Uh, let's take a look at first. Oh, uh, sorry, not not first. Uh, Colossians chapter one, verse nineteen. Colossians chapter one. Verse 19. And it reads, For it pleases the Father that in Him all fullness shall dwell. Okay? And in Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. Alright, so firstly, uh, there's three different views of the person of Christ. Num uh, one of them is a, a pole in the ology. Uh, so, uh, sorry, a pole in the ism taught that the one person of Christ had a human body but not a human or soul. In that the mind and spirit of Christ were from the divine nature of the Son of God. There is another view uh, called Nessor in uh, uh, ism. Uh, the doctrine that there were two separate persons in Christ, a human person and a divine person, a teaching that is uh, direct from the biblical view that Jesus sees as one person. And last but not least, monophysicalism view that Christ had one natural only. Okay. Let's take a look at the atonement. Okay. Uh, the atonement is the work Christ did in his life and death to earn our salvation and we see this in John 3:16 for God so loved the world he gave his only begotten son whoever believes in him shall have eternal life those who don't you know shall perish so oh I think my dog wanted to go out so give me one second Alright, <clears throat> I'm back. The dogs wanted, wanted to go out, so. Anyway, so let's talk about the resurrection and, um, actually, uh, no, let, me, let me add on to the, uh, the atonement. See, you gotta understand that Jesus is the Passover lamb. Or, as they may say, the sacrificial lamb. Um. Because he is the only one that we have got to be saved under. You know, uh, in uh, Philippians, I think it was either chapter, excuse me, chapter 3. Talks about um, every tongue shall come, no, actually, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We need to be saved by Jesus Christ and no other. Even when Jesus says, Jesus says that I am the way, the truth, and the life. You can't come to the Father except through Jesus Christ. So, God understand that the atonement is the most important part of our salvation because He paid the price. He paid it all for our sins and our lives. So that so that we now belong to the Lord. So, food for thought. <clears throat> All right, uh, the resurrection and uh, the resurrection and ascension. All right, let's talk about the resurrection. Okay, this is the most important important doctrine in Christianity. Is that the resurrection? 
And we can see this in Mar uh, sorry in Matthew chapter 28 verse 1 through 20 and also in Mark chapter 16 verses 1 through 8. Um in Luke also um yeah, actually, let me read Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. One through eight. When the seventh was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and some some me bought spices so that they may go and anoint him very early in the morning one uh sorry on the first day of the week they came to the tomb at the risen of the sun they set uh, they said among themselves who will roll the stone away from the door of the tomb for us. But when they looked, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, for it was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white robe, and they were frustrated. He says to them, Do not be frustrated. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go your way. Tell his disciples and Peter that he is going bef before you to Galilee. There you will see him as he told you. They went out quickly, fled from the tomb, for they trembled and were amazed, and they say nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. So we see that there, that Jesus was, was resurrected as he promised. My question, my question is, can Buddha do that? No, can can the Prophet Muhammad do it? No, I don't think so. Only Jesus can, for He is fully God. I tell you. Now let's take a look at the ascension into heaven. First is Christ ascended to a place. Uh, let's take a look at Acts chapter one. Acts chapter one. Verses 9 through 11. When, when he had spoken these things. Actually, no, let me go ahead and read uh, verse 6 through 11 for context sake. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, where are you at this time? Restore the kingdom of uh, sorry, restore the kingdom to Israel. He says to him, It is not for you to know the time or the dates which the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all, in all Judea, Samaria. And to the ends of the earth. When he had spoken these things, while they looked, he was taken up in a cloud, received him from their sight. While they looked immediately towards heaven as he ascended, suddenly two men stood by them in white uh, garments. They say, Man of Galilee, why standing looking towards heaven? This same Jesus who was taken up from you to heaven will come in the, 
in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Uh, that's pretty interesting. Pretty, pretty interesting. And then we see this in uh, number two. Christ was seated at the right hand, God's right hand. Uh, we see this Acts 2 verse, verse 33. Therefore being exalted to the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this which you now see and hear. Okay. Yeah, we see this in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3, uh, Ephesians chapter 1 verses 20 to 21, and 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 25. Now let's take a look. Uh, now let's take a look at the offices of Christ. Number one, Christ as priest. Um, I'm going to be reading uh, Matthew 16. Matthew 16. Verse 14. And it reads, They say, Some say that you are John the Baptist, others say Elijah, others say, uh, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Oh, sorry, Christ as prophet. Excuse me. Um, the next one is Christ as priest. We'll, we'll get to that. And so, a lot of people accusing Jesus as priests. Uh, let's take a look at Luke chapter 7, verse 16. Luke chapter 7, verse 16. Fear came on everyone. And they glorify God, saying, A great prophet has risen up among us, and God has visited his people. This rumor of him was throughout all Judea and the surrounding region. Okay, there's rumors going on that he was accused of being a prophet. As you may know, uh, later on, uh, Jesus did prophesy uh, in Matthew chapter 25 and in others about the end times. And Jesus was right. These things will happen. And take a look at it today. We see more or uh, more earthquakes are coming. We've seen famine. We've seen wars and rumors of wars. Think about it. Alright. Christ as priest. Uh, the great example of this is Hebrews. The book of Hebrews has a lot of stuff, a lot of goodies. I'll tell you. Uh, let's take a look at Hebrews chapter 9 verse 26. <clears throat> For then he would had laid to suffer repeatedly since the world was created. But now he has appointed once at the end of the ages to put away sin by sacrificing himself. We see, we see this again in... Uh, Hebrews chapter 10 verse 4. For it is not impossible for the blood of the bulls and the and goats to take away sin. Therefore, when he came into the world, he says, Sacrifices and offerings you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. And burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin you have had no pleasure. 
and yet Jesus fulfilled the the different offerings in the book of Leviticus because he was the he was an ultimate sacrifices for our sin for our life. Amen. So number three. Christ as King. We see this in 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 Revelation chapter nineteen. Revelation chapter nineteen verse sixteen reads All oh, his robe and his and his thigh has I'm oh, sorry, he has a name written King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Okay, we see that there. Uh, even in the Gospel of John, chapter 18, uh, verse 36, Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world, if my kingdom were of this world, then my servants would fight, that I would not be handed over to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. Therefore Pontius says to him, Then are you a king? Jesus answered, You, you say correctly that I am a king. For this reason I was born and this, and for this reason, I came into the world to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Whew, that's powerful stuff. Understand that Jesus is King, and He will always be King over our lives. That's why we got to pray and seek after the Lord for revelation of Him. Lord Jesus, who are you? You know, and, and God will show you things in Scripture. Um, uh, in, in context of it, too. Alright, so that's the end of the doctrine of Jesus Christ portion. Now, we, let's get into the works of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the definition of it, the work of the Holy Spirit is to manifest the active presence of God in the world and in the church. And uh, we see this in Acts chapter 10 verse 38, Romans chapter 8 verse 23, Isaiah chapter 32 verse 14 through 18. Um, <clears throat> so A, the Holy Spirit empowers. Number one, he gave life. We see this in Job chapter 34, verse 14 through 15. And we see this in Psalms 104, verse 30. Number two, he gave, no, sorry, he gives power for service. We see this in Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 9. Num, uh, the book of Numbers chapter 27, verse 18. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. 2 and 3, Matthew chapter 3 verse 16, and Luke chapter 4 verse 36, and 40 to 41. B, the Holy Spirit purifies, and we see this in John chapter 16 verse 8 through 11, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 11, um, Matthew chapter 3 verse 11, and 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13, which I'm going to be reading to you that scripture. Second Thessalonians chapter two verse sixteen. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ Himself and God of 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 sorry God our Father, who has loved us and has given us eternal consolation and good hope through grace, uh, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word word. And work. Okay, we see that there. C. 
the Holy Spirit reveals um, the one revelation to prophets and apostles. And we see this in uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 21. And I'm going to read to you that scripture. For no prophecy at any time was produced by the will of man, but the holy man, moved by the Holy Spirit, spoke from God. Number two, he gave, so he gives evidence of God's presence. And we see this in John chapter 15 verse 26, Acts chapter 5 verse 32. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3, um, he, get, he guides and directs God's people. And we see this in Matthew chapter 4, verse 1, where, where Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit to go to the wilderness to fast and pray for 40 days and 40 nights. And, uh, you know, defeated the enemy. You, you know the whole story. In Acts chapter 8, verse 29. Uh, number four, he provides a godlike atmosphere when the man, when he manifests his presence. Uh, we see this in John chapter sixteen, verse eight through eleven, and Colossians chapter one, verse eighteen. Oh, sorry, first, oh, sorry, uh, Colossians chapter one, verse eight. Number five, he he gives he give us a uh, he gave us a subption or yeah something like that uh, Romans chapter 8 verse 16 and 1st John chapter 3 verse 24 and number 6 he teaches um, John chapter 14 verse 26 and Mark chapter 13 verse 11 the the last point of this of this lesson the Holy Spirit unifies. We see this in we, we see this in Joel chapter two verse twenty eight through thirty two, and also in Matthew chapter thirty one and thirty two. So, uh, study about you know I I really encourage you to study about the Holy Spirit in Jesus Christ. It's going to be a wonderful study. Uh, next week. For uh, systematic theology, we're going to get into lecture eleven, which I'm going to be uh, showing you uh, the doctrine of application of redemption, part one. There's a lot to it in the systematic theology textbook, so I'll try to limit the information that I can. But anyway, so I hope, I hope you guys have a great, great week. Uh, may God bless you, and I'll see you again later.